So outside of you're on your path of learning what it can do, but at some point you have to make this kind of leap to, I think we have a business here and then how do we approach it? And so was it always water? Was it, what was the thing that you said, okay, how do we make this? Cause it's brand new. I don't, I don't know anything else that existed like this in the market. And so to some extent you're kind of going off the deep end and introducing a product that no one's really ever heard of, or even other than like seltzer water, which might mm-hmm. just have more bubbles is kind of foreign. And so what made the jump for you? What was, were, were you investigating, trying it with your friends and then seeing how it was going with a small group of people? Yeah. So you're, you're right about saying going off the deep end. Cause I really did. I mean, I was totally a neophyte when it comes to this area. I mean, my background was in fashion and, and home goods and, you know, jumping into a beverage company was really, you know, certainly not something in my wheelhouse, but aside from the fact of, of losing my friend, I then went and reached out to three very well-known health professionals. And I sent them at the time, there were about 170 published papers. And I sent them the papers and I said, read through these and let me know what you think. And all three of them got back to me and said, Gail, if you could figure out how to get the hydrogen free flowing in the water and then create a container that would maintain its integrity without it outgassing, you will have the first naturally functional beverage. So I figured easy, right? (laughs) (laughs) Anything but easy. And so, you know, at that point I sat down and and just tried to figure out, well, what was going to be my game plan? How was I even, you know, going to go about this? So I did some more research and found out that a lot of the studies were being done in Japan. And, you know, having traveled to Asia in my past businesses, it was very comfortable for me to go there. So I reached out to some of the scientists and doctors and scheduled some meetings and flew out there and met with them. And it was really disappointing because they were not in the business of manufacturing a consumer product. They were, you know, knee deep in studies. They were bubbling the hydrogen in a just in time situation. They Mm -hmm. weren't really particularly concerned about what the packaging was going to be like. So except for some basic principles, I really came away from there very disappointed. So I came back to the United States and again, you know, had another uh, meeting of the minds with myself and saying, okay, you know, you're on your own. You're going to have to figure this out. And there were, you know, two very big principles here. One was how do I get the hydrogen into the water? And one of the key things that I wanted to do is I wanted to work with pure hydrogen gas because there are electrolysis machines out there and that will split the hydrogen and the oxygen. But I wanted to start with the purest hydrogen gas possible. So the one thing that I learned when I was there is to work with what they call 5-9 pure hydrogen gas. So that will give me the best results. And then I started to do more research and found out that there was a company in Germany that was doing something really unique technology. And it wasn't for hydrogen at all, actually. But when I read all the studies, it just made sense that this could be something really good for hydrogen. So I contacted the company and I thought maybe I could get the equipment here in the United States. And they said, no, if you want to use it, you'll have to come to Germany. So I took Barry, the basketball player for moral support and a couple of people that I thought would help. And we went to Germany and set up a lab and it went amazingly well. I couldn't believe that my theory was right, spot on, and that it was helping me create a lot of hydrogen except for one problem. The end result of this technology created a lot of heat, and heat is like kryptonite to hydrogen. Mm -hmm. And so basically after all that time and all that money, 
we packed up and came back to the States. So then I said, okay, well, what do I do now? So I knew that I had to try to mix the hydrogen and the water. So you're, you're going to laugh, but I went to Home Depot. I bought a cement mixer and <laughs> then I got a couple of beer kegs and proceeded to try to figure out from the very basic form how to get the hydrogen in. And then after I brought in an engineer and together we worked on a way to being able to bring it together. And today we have three high speed machines. So it's really, it's come a long way. The machines that you have now, do they have any resemblance to the, the beer keg and the cement mixer? <laughs> No, they don't. But I still have them in the garage. So just to remind me of where my roots were. <laughs> <laughs>